Hello, Emma. Hiya. How are you? You okay? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really good. Bit strange, you see. We've just had two minutes uh, looking at what we might talk about. Now I'm about to go all formal, which really isn't me. Um, so I'm going to introduce you, Emma. So you are Emma Pooley. You yep. are our current uh, women's first 15 captain. Apparently so. Absolutely. Yeah, you got the you got the uh, you got the task. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I I do actually really enjoy it. It's good to be able to have a voice and to be able to put it forward, um, and to be able to listen to what all the girls are saying, so I can take it forward to the club and things like that. How long have you been in uh, in role then as captain? Um, so I'm going into my second season. Um, I've been playing at Hoppers. This is my third, fourth season I'm going into. Um, but it's about my 14th year of rugby, so I've been doing it really? a while. Where were you, which, which club were you with before you came to Hoppers then? Um, I was playing for Tabard RFC, which is based down in Radlett in Hertfordshire. Oh, OK. And, and you were there for how long? Uh, I was there for 10 years. Down in Hertfordshire. What brought you up to Preston then? A um, mixture of things. London's pretty busy. Um, I'm not a massive fan of all those people. I'm actually like a northerner at heart, even though my accent won't say that at all. <laughs> Well, we've adopted you now, though. That's the yeah, pretty much. That's it. You're up here now. I tell you, the um, you know, I've I've been involved at Hoppers for a long time, and I remember, I remember the women's team starting. And when you think about where that uh, where that area of the club has come from, that standing start to where it sits now, it's a terrific story, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It was sort of the the people that were really involved in sort of starting it um, were Shirley and and in terms of really pushing women's rugby, wanting to be able to play it, spent a lot of time around the club. Um, and women's rugby within itself, it's one of the fastest growing sports um, for women in the UK. And yeah. we're seeing it grow worldwide. It's becoming bigger and bigger in places like the US. Um, they're having a huge following of rugby right now. And we're just seeing that with the Women's World Cup. Um, it's getting more and more people. I've been at the last two World Cup finals. They're packed out stadiums filled with women who like watching and also women that love playing rugby. I think the, uh, you know, that's a really interesting stat, isn't it? That it is one of the fastest growing sports in the UK. I guess it's one of the fastest growing sports for women, actually, worldwide rugby union. Why do you think that is, Emma? I think it's got a lot of different skill sets and it's got a position for everybody. And it doesn't really matter when you come into rugby. So I started playing rugby at 18 when I was at university. Um, yeah. I wanted to play a sport, so it was something different. Um, but in terms of players themselves, we've got a range of ages within the team. Our oldest is 46, youngest is 18, um, and we've got all in between. And it's a mixture of height, sizes, speed, strength. Um, everyone's got their own thing that they can bring to rugby, which is why I think it really supports that. Whereas you go to other sports um, that are probably a bit more particular or you need the same skill set through the whole team, mm. um, that it just it's such a different sport to everything else. I know that uh, when I've watched some of the uh, women's training sessions uh, on the odd night when you've had this, when you've trained on the same evening as, as us, one of the big things I noticed with the players is, uh, and I think that, the, that Arnie would definitely back this up, women's players look to me to be more coachable, uh, look to ask more questions, I think, of the coaches and try and understand why, why we're doing something. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case with women in general. Um, they want to know why they're doing something. Um, but they want to understand the, the basics of it. Women's rugby is slightly different from the men's. Apart from all the rules being exactly the same, we probably kick a lot less. Um, so it's more tactical rugby. It has to be the rucks, the malls, yeah. um, the backline plays. Like You have to understand what everyone else is doing because it's very rare that they're just going to kick it and we're going to have to play from that position. Yeah, the ball, the ball is in play more often, isn't it? It's certainly for longer periods of time. Definitely. It seems to be quite a long time, uh, you know, between line out, say, or set piece. It's interesting because that really, that really tests the skill set, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You've got, it isn't sort of like in a case with, with the men's or with even other sports, like things like American football, where you get to stop every 10 seconds and have a break. You can be constantly playing. There could be 30, 35 phases before anything happens that, is going to give you a break. So you have to, your fitness level has to be up there, your skill set and being able to play the game in front of you rather than just off the set piece where you know exactly what you're going to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. It means you're thinking constantly, doesn't it? And there's no downtime in the game. And it, it's interesting because I, 
I was at the club last year on one of the NatWest volunteer days. I was just out. I just wanted to see what was going on. There was a couple of uh, superstars of the game. So Paul Grayson was down, who's an ex-hopper, of course. But yeah. the most impressive speaker on the day, I thought, was Maggie Alfonso. Yeah, uh, I'm a massive fan of Maggie Alfonsi. I've followed her career. She played at Saracens, yeah. um, who happened to be my team, obviously being a Southerner. Yeah. Um, and I have friends that play with her. She's just, she's probably one of the best women's sevens in the world, if not one of the best sevens in the world. She's a phenomenal player, but she's just got such a presence and such a passion for rugby um, that you can't help but fall in love with the sport when you hear her talk about it. Yeah, and I... I, I listened to her. She spoke maybe only for maybe five or six minutes to to a group of people in our uh, in our Dooley suite in the main in the main area, and the, her passion was phenomenal about the game and what it had given her, and um, and how she had used that to uh, develop a sense of self, a sense of self worth, and to really truly understand who who she is as a person. It was brilliant how she how she brought that back to rugby. And when you think about, you talked about, you know, being at, uh, at the Women's World Cups, two World Cups, I think you said you've been to. And, uh, you know, the, in, in England, we've got such a world-leading uh, international women's side in the Red Roses. There's a number of, uh, any number of players in there that can be role models for, for players of all ages and all, um, of all skill sets, but boys or girls, actually. So when I think about that, and we've now started with, the junior girls under 15s and under 18s what do you think about what we're trying to do there in the mini junior space are you are you pleased that we're doing that yeah absolutely like the thing is is with rugby is that you can't play it forever so you've got to be bringing in new blood and the biggest thing i think for anyone who is as passionate about the sport or loves the sport they want to encourage the game to continue um, and we want to be able to watch new players fall in love with the game and just develop their skills when I started playing rugby, yes, there was an England team, but it wasn't a really an option for career or anything like that. We've now got professional rugby players. The, the yeah. Tyrrells 15s, well, it's not going to be Tyrrells for much longer, but the premiership inside is pulling through and we're going more and more professional. They're having a salary cap. They're going to be pay, paying their players at some point. Yeah. Uh, under 15s, under 18s are, are the ones that are going to probably benefit from that the most. So we really want to be supporting them and helping them reach their achievements and their goals within rugby, whatever level that is, whether it's just playing club rugby, where it's getting to county, or whether it is playing in the premiership and then potentially at a World Cup. Yeah, do you know what? I think that's such a lovely thing, isn't it? And we've got, you know, some of these girls that are coming through now, uh, some of them will play professional rugby, I guess. That would be my guess. I've watched them train on a Sunday morning when I'm watching my son. There's some, some really gifted players, two or three really gifted players, uh, that are under Tino's charge. And, you know, we're, I think we're up to over, um, just over 30 girls now. And that's got to bode well for us as a, as a senior side, for you guys as a senior side, for the women's uh, first 15 in the, in the years to come. So with that in mind, what are, the, what are the kind of things that you're hoping, Emma, to improve on as a, as a, as a women's section within the club? What are the things that you're looking to improve on? And then on the back of that, what can we do as a wider club to help you achieve those aspirations? Um, I think one of the biggest things that we really want to focus on for this season, obviously taking away from playing better rugby and that sort of thing, is actually affecting the greater community. Um, obviously, everything that's been happening with COVID-19 has made everything sort of really obvious that there's a lot of places that we could be beneficial and help. Um, we've set up a social committee and most people think, oh, that's just about organising our nights out. But it's so much more than that. We're looking at um, how we can fundraise, how we can work with local women's charities um, to support them in any way that we can. We all come from a range of backgrounds yeah. and we all do different jobs and have different skill sets that we can offer to other people. Um, and we really want to be promoting that. So we want to look at potentially with women's refuge systems where people are trying to get out of really bad situations. Yeah. What can we be doing to help them? Rugby helps all of us in our own ways, um, mm -hmm. mental health wise. It's obviously the exercise part of it, the teamwork. It gives us a really good support system. Um, so we really want to be building on a community basis and just make ourselves more aware within the club. Um, so for the girls or even the men's team, like we're very close links with the men's team. We do get on with them really well. Sometimes they have problems that they might need our advice on or help with. And we want yeah. to make sure that they know who we are so they can come and grab us if they need us. 
brilliant. In terms of what the club can do, um, the club do an awful lot for the women's team um, and we are really, really grateful for everything they do. Um, I sit on the committee, so I get to hear what's going on in the club um, and really sort of try and support them as well as us. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing is just sort of making sure that people know that we have a women's team and really promoting that because there's a lot of wives, girlfriends, mums, sort of all that sort of stuff that people could be getting involved. You don't have to play rugby to be part of the women's team. Um, we have a couple of people that don't play rugby but want to be involved. So they sit as our secretary, for example, or for our treasurer or just help us get things ready for games. There's always a role to play and it doesn't necessarily have to be the one with the ball in your hand. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. You know, that's the role I have, you know, with the, with the first 15. You don't have to be a player. You know, no. you know, I, I I was a player, but I don't have to be a player now, and um, uh, and and I think that helps us keep connected to the club, and I think that helps us with that, as you said before, you know, that mental side of our mental well-being. I'm interested to just understand what you're doing on that, actually, Emma. The COVID nineteen and lockdown is is tough for a lot of people. How are you as as the as the captain? How are you looking after your players and your uh, your teammates mental well-being through this time well i think in terms of one of the biggest things is obviously staying in touch but it's working out who's not staying in touch as well so we yeah. obviously have group chats we have we have been having socials on zoom and it's noticing the people that aren't there that we would expect to be there or they've suddenly disappeared or they're just not talking as much and it's yeah. just about reaching out to them and just being like look if you need anything i'm here or do you want to go for a walk? Like it's speaking, like one of the team was having a really rough time. So I was like, look, let's just social distance. Let's meet up for a walk, out for an hour, just to sign if you've got anything you want to get off your chest, or we can just talk about rugby, or we can talk about anything. And I think it's just about making sure that we do that. Um, one of the biggest things that we've sort of been running is our Many Miles of May, um, which obviously we did during May. Um, yeah. The aim was to walk, run, or cycle um, 1,869 miles during the month. Um, we absolutely smashed it. Uh, we Brilliant. actually got to 2,433 miles Brilliant. and have raised uh, 1,217, um, which is obviously amazing. And we're so grateful to everyone that supported us. And it's really good for the girls because it's a way of us keeping in touch. So you uh, can see when people are going out and doing their exercise because we've all got it on a tracking app. So suddenly yeah. somebody's not gone out for a week suddenly we might notice that something's wrong because yeah and we the, the phone or doing whatever, doing yeah. it. so it, it is so important isn't it you know you can very quickly get lost in your own bubble your own your own uh, life at home but actually if we take this opportunity to reach out and look after everybody i think we can come back from covid just as just as tight just as strong if not tighter and stronger than yeah. we were before and um, so that's brilliant to hear that you're doing some stuff and it's, we're doing some similar things and, and actually there's one or two bits in there that I'll be able to take back to Gareth and Arnie and suggest that we that maybe we do differently and that's good. Now, one, the last thing I wanted to touch on, because I think it's a really good, good way to end, is you're looking for a new coach, aren't you, as a, as a women's first 15. So talk to us a little bit about that, Emma. Yeah, so we, um, we have our head coach, um, Sarah Bowler, um, and we have our assistant coach, uh, which is Grace Handby. But we really just think we need some extra support just to sort of give us the biggest range that we can. There's a lot of experience there. There's a lot of brilliant ideas and they've got a lot of stuff that they can do. But there's only so much two people can do if you've got 30 women at training. <laughs> yeah. And as a team, we have a range of players. We have um, anything from never picked up a rugby ball before to county level players. Yeah. And the more coaches we have, the more that we can split people up if needed, give people the extra coaching, not only on the basic level, but on the advanced level. There's some things you can't be coaching somebody that's never picked up a rugby ball before because they'll never have any idea what they're doing. No, and that's absolutely. Not gonna work. And it can so, be dangerous. Yeah. Exactly. And it, we don't want to, obviously we don't want any injuries. We don't want anyone to get hurt. That's the last thing that we want to do. So it's all about safety. But we just feel a new coach would really bring in something to the team. Needs to work well with us all. We need to work well with obviously our existing coaches, with the captain and vice captain, um, and just make sure that everything works as well as possible. But also bringing in any new ideas. We've been playing rugby for a long time. It never hurts to have a new opinion or a new way of looking at things. And how then, on the back of that, how then would any prospective coaches go about making their application known to yourselves? Um, so what they would need to do is if they can get in touch via either our Instagram page, which is at Hoppers Women, um, or our email address, which is Hoppers... Well, no, it's not. 
let me start, I can't even remember my own email address. <laughs> Luckily, as I keep it on there. Yeah. I never have to email my own rugby team. No, absolutely not. I don't have uh, my own phone number, so you're in good. Always people. helpful. So the email address is hopperswomenrugby at gmail.com. Brilliant. And I think, uh, I think we'll end it on that. But thank you so, so much, Emma, for giving up 15 minutes of your uh, valuable Monday evening. I hope that we've managed to cover some of the things that you were hopeful that we'd get across. Yeah. And I look forward to seeing you at the club, no doubt, in the coming weeks or months. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Thank you.